Hi, this is Ashley with Chaos Cult Painting and Nerds Delta, and today we're going to be talking about painting the 8th edition Death Guard Plague Marines. Uh, generally, I like to start out any project with the P3 white, Zamora white, um, all over the model, of course. You can thin this down with water. Next, we'll go into the normal oil. Uh, normal oil should go all over the entire model. Um, it's definitely okay to do this, um, you know, graciously and get as much as you need to all over the model, of course. And uh, using a good shade brush definitely helps with this. Now once you've gotten the wash all over the model, you definitely want to give it at least two hours to dry. Uh, this is going to allow everything to set into the crevices without having to worry about laying paint over it and having it smear any problems. Uh, generally speaking, it is always best to at least give, you know, two to four hours for any wash to dry. So now that we have our normal oil completely done, it's all painted, it's good, uh, we're going to move on to Ashtonian Camel Shade. This is also going to be a uh, Citadel Shade color, and it's going to be a kind of like a grimy green-brown color. Um, it really helps give that characteristic armor color that the Plague Marine models are really known for. Um, so with this, even though it's really mainly for the armor, you're going to want to go with kind of all over shade on your model um, and definitely put this directly over the dried null oil. It's going to give you the best possible effect as far as color saturation and coverage goes. Um, I went ahead and used the same brush. Again, just, you know, investing in a good shade brush or something with long bristles and a pretty big amount of bristles it usually tends to help kind of like a fatter brush. And uh, same thing, you're going to want to definitely give a little bit of time. I know that there's some varying uh, degrees of belief on how much time you need to let, you know, a wash dry or a color dry. But um, in this case, because these models are so heavily detailed and uh, there's so much depth, give it a good two to four hours once again. Next, moving on to our base color, Death Guard Green. Uh, this is where I kind of like to switch to the Artificer Layer brushes by Citadel. Uh, these are really great because they will, you know, kind of uh, allow you to have a brush with longer bristles, but also very precise. I do thin with Lamy and Medium, um, also by GW. And Lamy and Medium is an emulsifier. It actually, uh, you can use it in place of water. Helps keep those pigment molecules uh, at the same general size that they were manufactured at. This is going to help you keep a really nice color. Um, it's kind of the same color that the paint was made to have with still being able to thin it so you're not compromising integrity of the color. Um, now you're going to want to get this all over where your armor is going to be. This is going to be not only your base color for your armor, but it's going to be the color that really stands out and again kind of helps you achieve that you know grimy green really well-known color for these models specifically and uh, this is going to be a time where you want to pay attention you know to where you're putting down your color try uh, try not to overlap too much stay within lines and try and get it laid as evenly as possible with your strokes this is really going to help you when it comes time to, you know, kind of line it with your other colors like your metals.
Thanks for looking at the Balthazar Gold. Um, also going to be using an Artificer layer brush, but this is an extra small. And we're going to be doing a 2 to 1 ratio for our Lamy and Medium to paint. What that means is you're going to have basically two drops of your paint for every one drop of Lamy and Medium. Um, get it really nicely mixed. You know, of course, twist off your brush so that you've got, you know, a, a really nice tip on there because you're going to need this for fine detail. Um, and then what I like to do with this color is go in and, in this case, I'm going to line the shoulder pad. Um, and I'm really going to, you know, put this color in the forefront so that it's the metal that stands out the most out of um, any of the metallics that I'm going to be using on this model. In this case, again, you know, we want to make sure that we're taking kind of smaller strokes, um, shorter strokes, and working very evenly, paying attention to where we're going. Uh, what that does is it really allows you to have that control that's going to have this be a one-step process. Of course, if you do end up, you know, going outside of a line or you run over a different area that you weren't supposed to with this, even though it is a metallic, you can definitely go over with that Death Guard green again if you need to, since that is a base color, it is a heavier, uh, thicker paint. And with this color, I did leave out a lot of the rivets and the smaller details that would be metal. Um, because once we have this completed, we're actually going to be moving on and putting a secondary uh, metal color in, which is going to be a silver. So next we have our lead belcher. Um, this is a base metallic. So same Lamy medium ratio, 2 to 1, same brush. We're going to go in we're going to do some of our smaller details, um, some of the plating that's like back here on this little barrel that he's carrying around. Um, I also like to put it on the socket covers that are on his eye equipment um, and on the bullets that are strapped onto this, you know, kind of strap that he has here on his chest. That's going to really allow you to, you know, if you decide to change that color, you can lay different washes on top of this metal or you can really... Um, you know layer on top of it if you want to and it still maintains that really nice metallic uh, color that it lays down as and it dries it. So again using an extra small brush and this is because we're going to be going into some of the smaller details with that. So next we've got our Zandri dust. This is going to be the base for our bone. Uh, now with the Zandri dust, I did lay it onto this little shrunken head that we have kind of in the back here to do as the skin color, and you can do that with any extra little details. And uh, with the Zandri dust, it's kind of like a tan brown. It's also a base. Um, I did thin it with some Lamy and Medium as well. I used a medium brush to lay it onto the model. And it's nice to use for a base for bone color because it really gives it a depth and it really gives it especially like a worn, like sun bleached look when you lay other colors on top of it like the U Shop D Bone by GW or a Screaming Skull um, or really any general bone color looks great. Next we're going to use our Medium Flesh Tone by Vallejo. This is going to be going onto the tentacles. So anything that's like an abscess or like a kind of like a malady ridden area, I went ahead and I used this as a base for, as well as some of the parts of the shrunken head as well. And since this is a really yellowy color, it's going to play off the rest of the colors that we've used so far really well. So just make sure to get that on any of the tentacles and I also did some of the cords just to kind of add like a nice look to them, make them look really gross and um, you know like really dead flesh. Uh, it is a flesh tone color so it's going to look really nice when you add in other effects like bruising or like any type of you know purples that you would use to show like a liver mortis or uh, which just means an area where blood has settled on flesh.
next we're going with our Druchy Violet by Citadel. Uh, so this is again a wash. I actually used a uh, zero point, so like a smaller brush here by Games and Gears. And this is going to start by going over all of our Balthazar gold. Um, now, this is actually not going to come out looking purple over the Balthazar gold. What it does do though, is it gives it a really nice bronzing, um, and it makes it look really weather-worn, but also really iridescent and almost glowy. It's a really cool effect, and feel free to uh, use that on your whole army in this case, because I think it's definitely going to be a favorite as far as um, how it looks as an end product. And another great thing that I did use the uh, Druchy Violet for also on this model is to show bruising over that yellow that we did in all of the um, tentacle and abscess and really gross kind of, um, you know, sickly looking parts of the model. Um, it adds great bruising. It definitely makes things look very dead. So it goes great over flesh tone. Um, but in the meantime, like I said, also goes great over the Balthazar gold and really plays well off of that. Uh, with this, you don't have to be too careful, but again, using a small brush is definitely what I would recommend, just so that way you are not um, getting it too far onto your other areas. I did actually allow my lines to overlap a little bit on this step, uh, just because it looks nice, kind of with the thicker lines of this wash. Kind of gives a little bit more depth to the rest of the armor and everything else um, while not looking too purpley as long as you're not, you know, again, going crazy with how thick your lines are when you're laying this down. If you do manage to get too much into an area, um, feel free to kind of stop and dry your brush off and use it to sop up any extra. It's uh, definitely worth it to take the time to do that if you do have an area with an excess of this. Uh, because again, you don't want it to come out looking like you intentionally put a bunch of purple over an area. You, you're you using this more as like an accent um, to play off of the color that is already there. And once this is completely laid down, you don't really need as much time to let this dry since we just are putting it over the metal. Give it about an hour. Next is the Nuln Oil shade, again from Citadel. Um, I actually put this over all of my silver, and this is like a go-to step for me with any time I use Lead Belcher. I love to put Nuln Oil over it. Um, brings out kind of like a tarnished metal look, and it becomes really realistic. I did also put a little bit over the Xandri dust, just to give that a little bit more of a weather-worn look, even though we haven't started the real weathering process yet for this model. You can also put it around any emblems that you may want to like go back later and paint a different color onto. Um, like in this case on the knee pad, I did go ahead and you know put Nuln Oil over that. So that way when I do put a shade over that emblem, it's already going to be outlined and it's going to have a darker outline to show you know the higher opacity of the color that goes on there. Um, goes great onto weapons as well. So I did put it on the weapon that he's holding. Uh, just so that way it gets a little bit gross look. Um, next I did grab a little bit of Seraphim Sepia wash from Citadel here. And I did go ahead and put this all over the Xandri dust. Um, again, you can lay it directly over the Known Oil. With the Seraphim she Sepia shade, it is a really versatile shade, but it's definitely going to be a go-to anytime you do any bone coloring. Um, the reason for that is once you lay it over the Xandri dust directly and you let it dry, it really does give it um, more of a weathered look and it brings out the yellow tones that are going to be um, complementary once you do go back in and you highlight it with your actual bone color. Um, another place that I did use the sepia as well is on our yellow kind of like gross areas that we talked about earlier. So when you put that over the abscessed areas or, you know, like the pimply areas or um, any tentacles, it does add a depth and it adds a bruising and a kind of dry. Um, next is going to be your Brown Rose by Vallejo. Now you don't have to really do very much thinning of this. You can actually thin it with even just a little water. 
Um, I used it to add into the areas um, to make them look a little bit more fleshy on those, you know, kind of yucky parts. Um, next is a salmon rose. You can really use any lighter pink for this, but those are that color is great to go over any marks, pimple type of things, like anything that's sticking out or raised, you can put the lighter pink on. And again, use an extra small brush for this step because you're definitely going to want that accuracy. Next is um, going to be going back in with a little bit more of the sepia. Um, I went ahead and I put the sepia over those pink parts again. Um, even though those are, those are the fleshy tones that we talked about, this is going to go back in and make that flesh look dry. It's going to make it look, um, again, a little bit more bruised, a little bit more um, kind of abused, and uh, you know, just overall gives it that kind of gross. Tone. Um, next, I went back in with a Druji Violet, and this is what really ties those tentacle areas together. So we put the uh, Druji Violet not necessarily all over those areas, but just in the areas where you did not put the sepia tone. This will help the uh, area kind of totally blend together, and it gives it a really solid looking you know, look of dead flesh or flesh that is infected, rotting, um, just not healthy overall. And so that is what your final product should look like. Overall, there aren't that many steps, but just taking the extra time to do those washes and everything really makes the difference on these guys. And thank you so much for watching. Again, this is Ashley with Chaos Cult Painting and with Nerds Delta. Um, definitely make sure that you are hitting subscribe and making sure that your notifications are turned on so that you're able to see all of the videos that we release in the future. Um, the next video that we're going to have out for this set of models is going to be the video about weathering and putrefaction and making things look really nervly and gross and rotted and we'd love for you to be able to see that so again definitely make sure you're subscribed thank you so much